Hello guys! Magandang 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 araw! This is... In today's video of Back to Basics, we will talk about how can you go wrong the first time you will use the oscilloscope to measure some signal. For example, you know that you have a clean square wave input like this color pink or violet waveform but instead of getting a square wave you get this ugly looking waveform with too much delay and it looks like shark spin or a bunch of sharks moving towards you we don't want that to happen and obviously it will give us a wrong measurement we call this response as an overdump response which we do not need when we want to measure using the oscilloscope what we want is to resemble the original signal like this nicely looking square wave and the other kind of response that will give us a wrong measurement is this ugly looking waveform that has some overshoot along the edges on the rising and the falling edges that you know it doesn't resemble the perfect square wave that we want. This kind of response is called an underdump response, which we do not want to happen. What we want to happen is for us to have this critically dump response. The critically dump response is the response that we want on our circuit to resemble the original signal and take out the effect of our probe and oscilloscope or any measuring equipment effect on our system okay guys I will talk more about probe compensation the details of it and see how this works so I have to go back first on my computer for us to better understand why do we need a probe compensation, it is some kind of calibration that we need to do to ensure a correct measurement. So guys, let us simulate it using LT Spice. By the way, I recommend that you download this LT Spice circuit simulator. It is free all the way, very efficient and very effective circuit simulator let's start with having a schematic the first thing that I will do is to put a resistor that will mimic the value of termination resistance of our oscilloscope input that is usually equivalent to 1 meg so I'll put a 1 meg in here now for our voltage probe it can have a 1 to 1 or 10 is to 1 selector so that we will have flexibility of scaling low and high voltage that we want to measure and for that I will put another resistor in here that has a value of 9 meg so I'll have to make it into 9 meg ohm resistor let me complete our circuit so that we can start our analysis. I'll put first the ground and another ground for our input and then I'll have our input voltage that will serve also as our input signal and then the wirings of course for us to complete the circuit. So again this LT spice is very good very efficient. Now that our circuit is complete we can begin our analysis and I will configure our input to have 1 volt AC and we'll have the frequency that will sweep from 10 Hz to 10 GHz. That is an arbitrary bandwidth that I selected that will give us a good view on the frequency response that we want to measure. So let us see the frequency response by running the simulation. 
So there is a nice negative 20 dB output flat response from 10 Hz to 10 GHz that is expected because of our 1 by 10 ratio of output to input in our circuit. It is very flat because we only have resistances in here. However guys, the input of the oscilloscope also have this input capacitance. And usually that input capacitance has the range of 10 to 50 picoparad. For now, let us assume that we have this 22 picoparad. Then let us see how it will affect or change our flat response when we have only the resistors. Now, we run the simulation and you will see from the flat response of 10 Hz to 10 GHz using only the resistors in our circuit with the addition of 22 picofarad input capacitance on the terminal of the oscilloscope it greatly reduces our bandwidth response to around only 10 kHz. So it acts like a low-pass filter that we do not want because what we want for the oscilloscope measurement is to measure and to duplicate the original signal as close as possible that we can make. In the time domain, it will be reflected as an overdump response. And we do not want that in the measurement of the signal using the oscilloscope. To add on that, the probe itself has a stray capacitance, say about 50 picofarad. It's just an arbitrary value that I put in here, but uh, that's a good assumption. 50 picofarad for the probe that we have, and it came from the parallel plate that is constituted by the signal and the ground line. This will make the frequency response even lower that will further limit the bandwidth response. We run the simulation and see the effect. As you can see from our 10 kilohertz, Bandwidth response or cutoff frequency when we have 22 picofarad, and now with the addition of 50 picofarad of our probe, the bandwidth response now being cut off around 5 kilohertz only. That's so low, and again, we do not want that. The question, guys, is how can we compensate that overdone response? to make a critically damped response that will resemble our original signal. The solution, guys, is adding the variable compensation capacitor across the 9 mag. So, uh, I'm adding here the compensation capacitor. But be mindful that this compensation capacitor can also make our response to be underdamped. And in the time domain, that will be reflected as a ringing. So let us assume that we have 10 picofarad from the adjustable compensation capacitor. And let us see from this low frequency cutoff flat response upon the addition of 10 picofarad compensation capacitor. How will this effect on our bandwidth response? Now we run and see that we have improved our flat response. Let me make some adjustment on our scaling so that we can view it more clearly. So with the adjustment of the scaling, we can see clearly that with the compensation capacitor, we were able to get a fairly 
flat response from over 10 Hz to 10 GHz. Now, how about if I increase this one to, let's say, 50 picofarad? The compensation capacitor with 50 picofarad will give us this kind of response. And it's now not flat within the negative 20 dB that we want. So let me make some adjustment again. So it can be seen clearly in here that from the flat response that we improve having a 10 picofarad and then changing that to 50 picofarad, our flat response from around negative 20 dB seems to have negative 20 dB to negative 7 dB jump that will be reflected in the time domain as an under jump response which we do not want also. So let's go back and make this 10 picofarad again and see the response. And see, that is a fairly good flat response of our circuit that will resemble our original input voltage, somehow along the range of 10 to 10 gigahertz. Of course, it depends on the oscilloscope that you are using. Some oscilloscope have a bandwidth of only 100 megahertz. Some has 300, 500, or even a gigahertz in terms of bandwidth response that it can cover. Okay guys, so much for the theory. Before we end this, I just rearrange the circuit and put it into box so that we can identify what we're talking about. And for this small box, I'm talking about the termination or the input of our oscilloscope and this big box that has elements inside of it represents the equivalent circuit of our oscilloscope of course with adjustable compensation capacitor attached to it so that we can have an adjustment in case we have an overdump or underdump response in our connection from the input to the probe and up to the oscilloscope. Okay, so let us see some real actions. Now that we know the importance of the probe compensation, in every oscilloscope there is what we call this calibration pin that we can use for us to have compensation whether we have underdump or overdump response to make it critically damp. So every time you will use the first time with the oscilloscope and a probe, you need to calibrate first and do the adjustment. And we need to do the adjustment because all the equipments and different probes have, of course, differences, slight differences with each other depending on the manufacturer, and we need to address that. So in here, uh, I have a probe, uh, it is a key side probe, here's the model and 2862B and this is a 10 is to 1 passive probe that has a bandwidth response of around 150 megahertz, a 10 mega ohm resistance for this one and as I told you the probe itself has its own capacitance and for this passive probe I have around 15 picofarad. The question is where can we find that adjustable compensation capacitor? Some other probes uh, like the Tektronix probe I think I saw some I saw that uh, the compensation capacitor is in this terminal but for this key side uh, this is not in here but uh, the compensation capacitor adjustment is in the uh, probe termination so that yellow thing is the adjustable knob connected to our compensation capacitor 
Okay guys, I think that's all for today about the probe compensation. And the next time you will measure using the oscilloscope, doing this will not give you a wrong measurement. So see you on my next videos. I hope you like it. Subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bells so that every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. See you!